recap then, going over what we've just said in relation to what risk assessments are and their purpose. So we've said that, or you've said, <laughs> thank you, George, um, they're a pain in the you-know-what, all right? That's not what we're supposed to be saying, all right? You don't know. That's what you said, Mary. Yeah, that's quite interesting. It's a tick box exercise. Is that how you really, really felt, Stephen? Okay, yeah? You sat down with your manager and went through an occupational health letter, report, whatever you want to call it, and your manager actually said, we're just ticking boxes here, we'll just get on and do it, okay? But you do know that they're a legal requirement. Okay. So, so that that that, so it's a mix of everything, really. It's a little bit of um, perhaps not completely understanding what risk assessments are and what the health and safety executive actually stands for. So that might be why we think it's a pain in the you know what. If you don't know, then you need to ask. If you can't ask. <laughs> then you need to ask yourself, why can't I ask what's, what's stopping me from feeling comfortable with, with asking and maybe visit that within yourself or the relationship? If it's something that's been on <laughs> your occupational health letter and you've not understand, understand it, not understood what the case manager, which would be me, or the consultant has actually meant by recommending local risk assessments, then I would hope that you'd have a decent enough relationship with the person who's doing that consultation to actually say, what do you mean? A common one, one that I've written a lot as a recommendation, is a stress risk assessment. And these are on the HSE website. They're free, it's an absolutely free tool and it's an amazing tool. If somebody recommends a workplace stress risk assessment, pop over to the health and safety executive, have a look and see what, what, what's there. Okay, so tick box exercise, I, I, don't, I don't think, Anything in the workplace should be a tick box exercise. <laughs> yeah, it's demoralizing, it's demotivating. <laughs> I see everybody nodding, and but it's that that's the way we so often feel, isn't it? And it's not a good place to be, it's not a good way to feel. So we need to make sure that it's not a tick box exercise. We need to be invested for ourselves as the employee who needs the risk assessment or as the manager who's actually doing the risk assessments with the employee and the employees. So this isn't a, a workshop on risk assessments. This is a workshop on returning to work and staying at work. But risk assessments can form an integral part of looking at what you can and can't do and looking at reasonable adjustments. And I say reasonable because that's what it is. It has to be a reasonable adjustment. We can't expect the business to automatically be able to accommodate it. I'm off with my old favourite here. The role needs me to do 104 somersaults an hour to do the job. I can do four somersaults. Do you really think if you're honest, and it's all about being honest with yourself first, I think we've got to be honest with ourselves first, before we can even attempt to be honest with anybody else. If you're honest with yourself about what you can and can't do, can you only do four somersaults an hour? You, you know, I'm using that as an example in relation to what you might struggle with, what your strengths and weaknesses might be. So if, all, if you can only do four somersaults an hour, do you really think it's a reasonable request of your business, and remember, 
reasonable adjustments are a business decision. The business need to prove, if it went to a tribunal, the business need to prove that they've done everything reasonably practicable. So is it reasonable for you to expect the business to get somebody else to do that 100 somersaults to make up the 104 that are needed in the hour? Yeah. So I hope that's cleared that up a little bit. And yes, it is a legal requirement. Businesses need to, to do complete risk assessments. The people actually on the coalface, for want of a better word, the people involved in the work activity need to be the ones doing the risk assessments. It's pointless having me come in and do workplace risk assessments because I don't know and understand the intricacies of the role that you might know and understand because it's what you do every day. It's your bread and butter. So you're the ones that need to do the local risk assessments with your managers. You need to be involved in that because you might, there might be something so blooming obvious to you that somebody higher up can't see. But for you, because you've got your hands in the weeds all the time, you might be the one that can actually make a difference and recognise a risk and a hazard that they might just not see. So it is a team thing and it needs to be updated as and when needed really because things change. If you work in a small business and you've got less than five employees, it's just something that needs to be done. Sorry, if I said I meant to say less than five employees. If you've got more than five employees, it needs to be documented. But to be perfectly honest, it makes sense to document it, doesn't it? Because are you really going to remember six months down the line, six years down the line, what risks were identified and when and how you plan to address them? So I would say, even though you don't have to write them down, if you've got less than five employees, I would still su suggest that you do write them down. The five employees is, is relevant in the UK. I can't speak to other countries. So we're looking at risk assessments in relation to being able to address reasonable adjustments in relation to you having communications with your manager the business to look at what your strengths are, your weaknesses are, your limitations, so that reasonable adjustments can be addressed in the workplace. And that's really pivotal to, to what I, I'm going to be looking at with you today. Yeah? We're looking at your well-being, we're looking at your, your abilities, your limitations, and we're also looking at what, if you're honest with yourself, is a reasonable adjustment and isn't, and what you might be able to expect of your manager. But if you don't have that discussion, you never know. You never know what is achievable unless you ask. It might be that if you have that exploration, you can find some middle ground. Somewhere where you think, oh yeah, I could manage that. And your manager thinks, yes, we can accommodate that. I'm not saying that's always going to be the case, but it's worth that exploration. So getting the knowledge and the confidence to communicate what you know about yourself and it's being honest with yourself. If you can't carry your shopping for your everyday needs at home, this is an example, why would you think that you can carry your shopping if there's something like that needed for your role? So you've got to be honest with yourself first. And then you're talking from a place of authority because you know yourself a bit better and have that exploration with your manager to look at what 
between you might be considered a reasonable adjustment to get you back to work or to keep you in work if you're currently studying, like studying, struggling. Yeah. Any, any questions? So as I say, I'm not, this is not a workshop on uh, risk assessments. This is a workshop on getting you back to work or keeping you in work. And we will talk about the stress risk assessments a little bit later on. Okay, so um, let's move on from there and let's see what